G'day guys, today I want to talk about architecture diagrams. I think that they're so useful and they're missing from so many projects. They're especially useful when you have to onboard a new dev or you have been working in the back end and now you've moved to the front end and you need a refresher on that. Um, or when you have a bunch of people and you're discussing you know, structural changes, architectural changes, it's really useful to have it. Now, when you don't have one, all you can do is look at the resources of, say, that project. Here's an example of an Azure project and all the resources. That is just not visual and it doesn't show you all the flow. So let's just dive into it. When you have a, a brand new software engineer on a project, you've got the backlog. But the first thing I do is put an item on there to go through the architecture with them. And, you know, you can look at the dashboard that shows you the activity, but it doesn't show you the the visual overview of the project. Now, here is an example of the readme.md, uh, the markdown file that the developers read. Uh, that should have a link to the technologies and architecture. Likewise, the wiki, the one that the, the whole team can read, including the product owner, uh, over here you will see it should have a link here uh, to the technologies and architecture as well. So that is beautiful. That's what you should have. Now let's let's dive into that. When you're in the wiki, uh, which is where this should live, there's you know you might have your definition of done, your definition of ready, but this is the architecture diagram, and it can show you in this case uh, there's a SQL Server, there's SQL Search, there's other things. There is an Angular app here. Uh, there it's uh, putting data into Application Insights and into Raygun. It looks like the uh, the .NET Core API is not putting data into Raygun. Uh, it spits out to Cloudflare and then you have the users at the bottom here. So let's just talk about uh, eight cool practices or hot tips to make your application diagrams uh, good. So, of course, it should have your data, your business logic and your UI. Now, don't get fooled into thinking something like the Visual Studio dependency graph is uh, an you know, it's system architecture. It's not. It's the .NET architecture and you need something higher level than that. Also, make sure you add arrows so you can see the flow. Um, I'm not a fan of going left to right, um, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, I like to start with the data at the top. So I know some people like to put the users at the top. I always think it's better to start with the data. And this is a nice example of a real project, Sugar Learning, which we were just looking at. And you've got the data. And uh, this is the entire project. It, it's not too complex. So even a product owner should be quite familiar with this. Uh, if we scroll down, um, I like to, tip number five, is to group relevant components together. And uh, you know that's uh, quite useful. I also like to add an out of scope section for the things that are out of scope. You could even mark you know things that are being killed off um, with a little icon or a skull and crossbones or something. Now, how do you do this? The first thing you do is you start with paper. Most developers are familiar with grabbing a piece of paper and explaining to another software developer, a new one, how it all hangs together. And you can have that, a big sheet of paper like that. Um, and if you use Office Lens, you can make it turn into something quite nice. Look at the contrast between that. That's so dark and it just automatically crops it and highlights it so it's much more readable. It's really nice. Anyway, from that point on, you want to use the best tool out there. And that's called diagrams.net, much better than Visio and other ones. Uh, this is nice and plain. It's just black and white. This is a real one for Time Pro. Here we're using VS Code and it is this diagram is just an XML file. It's a .draw.io file. And um, this is a real one. This is uh, another project. And this, you can see from the purple, it's a Blazor project. Uh, super sexy. And this is all the pieces. And there's the outer scope stuff. So it's a re really quite nice. Now, you can polish things up a bit. Um, I like to, you can see the arrows are nice and big, you know, so you make the arrows bigger. That's bigger than the default. Uh, I always add a heading to the top of these, architecture diagram. Uh, I like to change the font to the company font, whatever that is for us, it's Helvetica Bold. Um, and add the location in the bottom right. Um, and uh, a bit of color is always nice. So here is a, a, this is a static site, this one. So I showed you some other different sites. 
um, of projects. This is uh, a static site, and you can see the flow of what's going through here. Um, it's uh, Markdown is updated in GitHub. It goes through a build is made in Gatsby, uh, grabs data from um, uh, Azure Blob Storage. It pulls in other things, and uh, then you uh, through and you serve up a static site to the user at the end. So that's um, a nice example of a whole bunch of different projects with nice architecture diagrams. Uh, I hope you now, now know how important they are, when they should be used, and some you know, you've got eight cool tips there of how to do a very nice architecture diagram. Thanks.